Glad to know you're still there. Uh, tracking device shortage hindering police probes into kidnapping epidemic. That is what is being said by uh, security experts. Um, we're being joined now by Dominic Rume Uririe, certified blockchain architect and metaverse expert. Good morning and welcome to the program, Rume. That feels so weird mm. when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not feeling weird. Just, I mean, yeah, Rume. <laughs> mm, that is not sitting here with me, though. <laughs> Welcome, Rume. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Okay, you... Yeah. Uh, um, uh, blockchain... Okay, let me start. Let mm -hmm. me just cool down and ask this <laughs> question. Uh, gadgets are not available, and that's why the tracking is difficult now. Um, I don't know. Is this really a thing? Should this be a thing for the security experts or security agencies? Is this a good enough excuse? Let's start from there. Well, there are countries that have successfully used technology to enhance their security measures. Like, for instance, border security agencies worldwide have been using technologies like biometric identification and artificial intelligence to truly revolutionize border surveillance. And you see, these technologies have truly been instrumental in preventing unauthorized immigration. Now, some of the things that happen with um, drug trafficking and terrorism, you see, sometimes we try to attribute it to a particular sector of the country where um, the border is very porous. Now, we can see that if we have technologies like this to help in identity verification, we can help the police to be able to curb one or two situations that happen, especially with these illegal immigrants. So they are not far from the truth. And when you look at it, the, men, the trauma that this type of kidnapping, the mental health trauma, I have a professor friend, one that is from the University of Lagos, and I experienced um, this kidnapping a certain time. Today is an advocate for mental health because he had to go through that route to be able to recover. So it's something that, uh, yes, we need a couple of these um, advanced technology infrastructures to be able to aid and collaborate with our security forces to help drive home security as we want it. Yeah, the reason I ask the question is not really that I, I do not think that technology is good enough, but the fact that security gets the highest budget year in, year out, and then they're still telling us that the lack of these gadgets is causing X, Y, Z. Now, as someone who knows about these things, do you think it is so difficult to obtain these things that they need to be able to track these criminals and bring them to justice? knowing the kind of budget that goes to security every year? Well, in terms of the defining if it's difficult or not, we might not be in the best position to um, put that because, I mean, we're not part of the defense department that's getting this. But one thing that I understand for sure is that the cost of acquiring these tools can be very daunting and it depends on the specific requirement of the organization. You can imagine, um, I, yesterday I was looking at a situation where maybe you want to acquire like, you just manage a country like Dubai now, for example. To be able to acquire those type of surveillance cameras and let's say imagine you want to put that in um, Portacot, something those type of surveillance camera in Portacot, you would to be able to curb one or two of these incidents. You see that it's very expensive. Now manpower to also be able to do that might become an issue. How about data sharing to be able to see that those things work in real time? Well, to maybe we need to move to IPFS, Interplanetary Fire System Method of Sharing. So the cost is actually great when, especially when you look at the requirements for every security infrastructure that has to be put together. I, but that's not to say that we have not deployed quite enough money to be able to get us to a considerable extent at this point in time. So I think we should run it. We should leave the excuses behind and take the actions to truly get us to where we need to get to. 
Mm. So what are those actions that you think, you know, can take us to where we need to get to? Because like we said, security takes a huge chunk of the budget. And um, another thing, the, the, the police people talked about using the resources from the DSS. Shouldn't they have their own? Or is there a way they can, you know, collaborate? I'm sure they do that right now. But I mean, with the information, they give information, you know, willingly. Okay, some of the actions will revolve around education of better um, and also align private institutions to collaborate with government because some of these private institutions will be able to get in some of these um, infrastructures and maybe they can now collaborate with them. Just like as we are seeing that, some of the time they tell you that, maybe, let's say, I've, I've had a situation where you want to do like tracking and then the police will tell you that they want, cannot do that particular tracking, they want to maybe use DSS tools for that. You see, those kind of things will not be happening if there is actually a plethora of those tools around. Like you have a multitude of um, different agencies that have access to those type of tools. I mean, they don't need to go to the DSS, they can just contact a private institution. So that means that it will be faster too. And then the documentation process that maybe they might need to scale through will be less so which means you will get real-time feedback for this case you are trying to tackle so these things are significant uh, measures that can be taken to enhance that security especially when you want to um, use the local laws and regulations too but well, you can start from those two bedrocks having given more private institution a lot of chance and then much more education in their lives to see that we can even develop the manpower that's necessary. Yeah, but you know, <clears throat> what gives us concern is whether it's true that it's a product of the lack of the gadgets or the product of the lack of the will to do the job they're supposed to do. Mm. Because whether they're gadgets or not, if they're not willing to do the job, they will not do it. Let me, let me give you some instance. Uh, Someone um, withdraws your money from the bank, you go to the bank, they know how to trace where the money went to, but they will not do it. You report to the police that someone has snatched your bag and they're telling you to fuel their car before they can move. Mm. See, that's not the product of saying the car is not available. They just want to frustrate you. You have to fund your own investigation. Mm. So is it really because there is no funds or there are no gadgets or something that do you believe this is really something that they should be talking about now or that they don't have the will to do what they're supposed to do you know two weeks ago i was reading a i was i completed a course on linkedin how to become an ally and it says to be able to check the root cause of every problem before you jump into that conclusion and um when you look at the situation that you have truly painted, there is, there is high level of truth in it. There is also a need to also ask why um, this has become the case or this is the issue. I think um, it might have happened for some cases, but you can't really generalize it to the general um, police, Nigerian police force because for what I also understand, there are times where they have done very well and they didn't have, they didn't really receive the best praises and accolades for it. However, it's, but there's no excuse for them to ever not be hundred percent up and doing, especially when it comes to security and protection of life and properties, or giving excuses for infrastructure gap. But I must tell you, when there's a will, there's a way. Mm -hmm. It's a wise man. When there's a will, there's a way. Why will the policeman be, be trying to drag his foot back when there is a, an ogre on top that has given the instruction for them to go? That means something is happening to at the head of that particular maybe unit or station that is not right. So um, I want to say it is a combination of both. That is um, a combination of having the officers that might not be willing and some of them too you might see it's also a combination of have, having a lack of infrastructure i mean okay for example um a, a soldier is only as good as how well you train him to use the gun in front of a battlefield so 
you might have a situation that calls for the police attention and the people that have that they want to go and fight um, or they want to go and destroy have better equipment or better infrastructure than them some of them might get scared as the human factor may kick in and they will not want to show their bravery anymore because of lack of infrastructure and then they are seeing that the odds is against them so these are um, real time uh, real problems that have truly ensued in this in the uh, sector so we must do everything to look at it and say okay this might have happened because of these reasons let's be able to empower them better in this place and then now hold them accountable. If something like that happens, you should report them to a, a civil authority. You should report the police people to be able to see that these things never repeat themselves again. Please, every Nigerian, do not take that type of nonchalantness from the security authorities. They are there to be able to protect the lives and property of every Nigerian, regardless of um, what it is as far as you have fulfilled your part of this uh, what is required as a citizen to do to get them into your situation then anything that happens that does not follow actions of movement to be able to rescue and save lives of property you have the right to report them to to a higher authorities glad that you're saying this because my concern is um when they get these devices right how sure are we that they're going to, you know, even be trained to use them accord, like how they're supposed to be used? Or they will utilize them. To use it. Yes, utilize how they're going to utilize them. And then if they're going to even use them at all. Because we've seen cases whereby, you know, they give them these resources and they don't, they don't care. They don't do anything to protect, you know, the Nigerian lives and properties, like you just said. So how sure are we that when they get this, it is not just a way to um, siphon money, one, because they might just say, oh, this is how much we need for this. And maybe that's not the amount. So a way to just embezzle funds. And then if they truly get these gadgets that, that they're talking about, how sure are we um, that they're going to utilize them as well? Yeah, it's bigger really back to that's key point that I made, that a soldier that you put in the war front is only as good as the, to the level of um, training you have given to him or her to use the equipment that you have given to that soldier to defend you in the war front. We can only be sure when we have truly applied efforts from our end. You know, there's a popular saying that life does not really give you what you want, it gives you what you take away from it. So having provided this infrastructure, we must take something away from uh, the roadmap that we must have designed for our security. And how do we do that? We ensure that we have provided this. There is also adequate required training for these new guys that will be required to operate it. I mean, every human being is, is excited to explore. When you have people willingly come from the different departments that want to learn how to use these equipment that have just been bought, I mean, those people will definitely come on board to be able to take on any challenge in real time. So it must come first that we take responsibility to actually train them and then give them, assign them to maybe special units. Right? Like I know that they have special units for different things. Maybe we'll differentiate some of them in terms of um what their job specification would not be so that we can always hold those set of people accountable for this i'm very positive that if training is given to the nigerian police for they will, they will always deliver on their duties uh, um, my, 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 the problem okay. is i i think they will get the training but i think the training may not be sufficient mm -hmm. psychological training and so on may not be as much as the physical training they're giving to them yeah. well, because when you talk about training and the person or a soldier being as good as the weapon before them the nigerian police people who are handling the guns i'm sure they know how to shoot it but yes. we also have information uh, from people who are being kidnapped and the kidnappers that are being uh, also captured as well, telling us that sometimes even these policemen use the guns that government has given to them to rent to kidnappers and make returns from these guns. No matter how we want to write off that, uh, we cannot because this is something that so many testimonies have come that happened. So will they, like it goes back to the question, will they even use it the way they're supposed to use it? 
Now they are complaining that it's because these things are not available. Well, what about the ones that are available? How are they using How it? How do you utilize it? Yeah. You know, the thing of trust is one of the biggest issues of man. And that's why technologies like blockchain technology to be able to help with transparency mm -hmm. and um, to be able to help with accountability is there too. Now, um, you are not far from the truth. Human beings, we can be compromised at any point in time, yeah. giving some incentives like money. Uh, maybe if a loved one is also under threat, um, it might be a reason for them to compromise their stand. However, we must now fall back to I think when these guys take their oath, they have the they have the oath to be able to protect lives and property no matter what. And um, if you sell your soul in Africa, yeah, we believe that if you sell your soul for money or you sell your integrity for just money, then you really have nothing else to look, to to be living for. If you mm -hmm. if you give it all out for just money. You know, I mean, money shouldn't be everything. So as Africans, I believe we as Nigerians, we've also sh um, proven over the last years, and even in the last recent uh, match that were the giants <laughs> of Africa. Mm. So, uh, we exude this level of um, self-discipline, this level of integrity, it's something that must not come from the the the, the, the staffs individual. I mean, you can you see the average U.S. police. He will not really compromise on a lot of things. You see the the average um, U.S. soldier, uh, Dubai police. They won't compromise on a lot of things. So let's look at the framework. How has this successful country done it? What did they really do for their police that is making their police not to be able to compromise? Can we start? implementing same. I know they've actually increased the salaries of police in recent time to be able to see that uh, one or two things like maybe money does not really become an issue that will make them compromise their stand. But we need to also do way much more than that. Maybe uh, assisting them to diffuse some of those extra costs that come with family because it's, it's currently a very Wild, wild west out there, especially with the bills, and it might make some of these officers compromise. However, I think if we take a trip, uh, if you, if if you, it's just like you have a security man that you have had in your, your in your gate for the last ten years. You are paying fifteen thousand naira for ten years. One day, uh, stiff people might maybe come to meet that security man and give him. One million, and you have never given him that, and you will, be, you will give them access into your house. So you need to always also check who is at the gate, check your guy at the top, and then use that process to be able to connect the gap of what is making these guys to compromise their stand easily. Okay, um, <clears throat> as we wind up now, we're, I just want to uh, get your suggestion. Since you said that it might be a very difficult thing to get these gadgets because the cost might be overwhelming, uh, they, they should be some that we can start with. I mean, in a country that uh, some senators can buy 160-something uh, million yeah, era cars, we shouldn't find it so difficult to buy gadgets that will protect the people. Because if we are not protected, no matter what you, you're driving, no matter, even if it costs a billion, you will not be safe driving it. So what are the, the, the basic ones that you think we should acquire as a nation that can help us uh, to be more security efficient, if, if I, may, I may use the word? You come again with your question. Where do we start? What kind of gadgets do you think we need at least to begin with if we cannot to get, get the everything that we, we want because the cost might be overwhelming? So which are the ones that you would recommend if you were asked? I mean, the for starters, the basic, you know, uh, the basic thing that builds every economy, every organization is communication. High level of communication. For starters, the police can start by having good communication system. Um, you know, one, you find out that some of them, they can also start by having um, 
smart cameras too. Like some of them, they are unable to communicate very well. You see them on the road shouting, Hey, hey, you, uh, they are trying to communicate with somebody. <laughs> and how that end. And you see, uh, maybe if there's a real time issue before they can communicate effectively to the other guy, it becomes what? It becomes the problem. So they can start from smart communicators they can also be, i mean these are they, easy they can also start from um, smart cameras they can also start from having uh, i think they can do better weapons right they can also because i mean you, you see some policemen eh, the gun that they are using eh, even some of our farmers they have grown some of those type of guns so we can start by also investing into their weaponry as well. So because, I mean, it, it, it just like iPhone and Android, though. If you hold them a good iPhone 15, you'll be happy to test the features on um, <laughs> all of the things. But if you are holding a, a Nokia C something, this one of today, to bring it out to test the features might not be exciting to you. So we must also upgrade in that aspect and I think with this basic upgrade we can start moving in the right direction. Oh, we need we need we, they need a lot of um, I think they also need a lot of computers and um, also the basic training to be able to I mean okay for example now you want I've had experiences that you want to be able to we, we need something called transaction traceability training for the for the uh, security system in general traceability tra like now we have the situation where we deal with digital currencies the cyber crime the cyber fraud um some of these i mean some of these kidnappers they use they use online passwords and means of obtaining information to be able to get across to to these people so we see that cyber security is also a place that the police must invest some level of tech skills into to be able to Trace getting get those IP addresses and all okay. of those things of these people that maybe they even use um, money fraud to do one or two things. Now I've seen a blockchain situation where the whole department, especially uh, uh, the department that was in charge of it, nobody knew how to even trace transaction on the blockchain. As a certified blockchain architect, I had to come in bring in one or two of my colleagues before we were able to do a forensic traceability report for the police. Now, just imagine we had four or five people that were like me or had the skill set that I have in just that police department. It would have been easy, right, for them to be able to do that. So they need um, skill set to trace transaction in this modern world. They can't, there's no skill set for transaction traceability. And I mean, that's one of the biggest places that fraud happens. Okay. Kidnapping money passes through in this country. So that okay. skill set is very, very necessary for, All the, right. for, the, for the police right now. All right. Thank you, Rume, for, for your insight to this. And uh, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank you for having me. Yeah. OK, that, that was Rume. That was another that, rumor. That was another <laughs> Dominic Rume Uriri is a certified uh, blockchain architect and metaverse expert. Uh, the complaint has been from the security architecture that we have that tracking device shortage is the one that is hindering police probes into kidnapping epidemic. Okay, well, we do hope that whatever they, their needs are will be satisfied and we will be safe and uh, we can sleep with our both eyes closed yes. as it is. That's the prayer. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, this is where we wrap it up. Yes, this is the size uh, of our show. show. We thank you so much for being a part of it. We're inviting you back for tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rume Paulson. Have an amazing day.